we have questions from the audience? Yeah, uh, I'll get to everybody, but I'm going to start over there and work my way to this one again. I have a question, just a comment I saw at the Toronto Oxford Film Festival, and it was by far the best film award. Well, thank you. Thank you. And Jennifer was uh, voted the best actress. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. In fact, even more so because the, re the revenges are bigger and her payoff is better in this one. So, yes, definitely. Thanks for that. Maybe I just got used to it over the course of the shoots, you know. Um, and in some ways, it was easier um, just technically because I didn't really have to do much. I mean, these guys were crazy, you know, and like they had this pack mentality and they worked really well together. All the guys, like, you know, hung out and like made sure that they had this bond before we started shooting. So, like, when, when it came time for them to assault me, it was like, they had, I don't know, they had this like inner communication, like they're like an anthill or something. I don't know. And, yeah, and I was like all alone in the middle of it. And all, I mean, all they have to really do is just really be there and, and just really experience what they're doing to me. And that's what I did. And, it, you know, it was difficult in the sense that, you know, it was hard to let go of that. Sometimes Steven would yell cut and I would have to just cry it out for about 10 minutes because it's not an easy thing to go through. Yeah, so definitely hard. <laughs> uh, let's have a look. We've done some talking about the film. Let's have a look at a clip from the film, and uh, we'll come back and we'll discuss uh, a clip. So this is a clip from the new version. That's really something I just want my mom to be proud of. <laughs> Listen, it goes back to her again. She made it fun because I could go further. I mean, I, I, I can, you can go further if if, um, if you feel like you can. If, you, if, you, if you've got somebody you're working with that's a pro that's like, listen, I trust you, let's do this. Um, you can go further and then you get some, uh, I mean, some real great stuff out of it. Well, the, for me, you know, I said earlier about the scene with the baseball bat and uh, the screaming, and, and, and this doesn't give anything away, but. Uh, there's some banging of the baseball bat and screaming. I found that so unbearably tense to watch that in in some cases for me the 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 stuff that wasn't the really overtly violent stuff was the stuff that got to me more because it was about to lead up to something that I didn't know where it was going. So like in that later on in that scene that we just saw when they're lighting matches and just flicking them at you and it was just so unbelievably like cruel and and such an odd thing to do, like little kids on a school ground doing it, but yet you know there's this huge violence coming in. I, I find it really, really intense. I think something that's really interesting about the film, and um, you know, not to sit here and give um, props to, to myself and the rest of the cast, I'm not trying to be that thing, I promise, but there's a nice ease, um, there's a nice tone in this film of the, um, sometimes you see and you catch these catch these type of movies and the evil doers are so amped up that when the evil action happens it has nothing on how amped up they were for the entire movie and you're like well he's a this kind of like um you know mustache twirling evil guy yeah. through the whole movie i mean why is he doing it who the hell is he i don't believe that he's friends with any of these people and in this there's a nice easy tone and the shit that happens is so bananas at moments that it just and it comes from an easy place and i think that makes it it gives it more reality and the the, uh, well, the well, Sarah talked about the pack mentality of you guys, and I guess that's you know the characters were given that as well. 
we had a, we had a good thing on set because I mean there was uh, Stephen Monroe had a lot of trust with us and you know, we would be slated to shoot two pages of uh, two to three pages um, of the script so we're going to start here we're going to stop there when they got their blocking we went through it for camera cool all right and then all of a sudden you know you're on page four page five page six page seven and he wouldn't he would let it go because good things were happening but there was moments when there's certain things that had happened that the pack would tell us it, it did kick in right we didn't have to tell each other to do anything we didn't have to rehearse anything at moments and there was some really complicated stuff going on that was being handled by everybody it was um it was a few moments it was disturbingly real as far as the shoot goes Oh, well, it and was real. Those matches was, were real. I know. Well, you, you, and, well, and there's no way from your hair. And I thought your hair was going to... I could smell my hair burning. The I was really freaked was, out. The baseball bat was very real. There was a lot of, we, you know, there's, if, there was a couple of nights that if things didn't go exactly right, it could have been a real big shit show. There is a stunt double in this film that were, that is probably on screen for about two seconds. And it's not in any of the assault stuff. So, um, you know, Sarah did it all, and these guys did it all when, when the tables were turned on them. Yeah. And it was uncomfortable on both sides. I can say that for sure. Yeah, no doubt. Lisa, you said that, um, you know, you wanted to go, uh, you, you said there's no way to go where the original went. Um, I think we did, and then we went some, and then you say, love it or hate it, people will remember this film. And it sort of reminded me of, uh, you know, that it doesn't matter what kind of reaction you get as long as you get one from people. Is that kind of uh, how you feel well, still now that the film is about to be released? Not just that. I mean, you know, if I could, you know, my phrase for this film would be, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. Um, I, you know, like Deliverance stayed with me when I yeah. saw it. It was a great film, um, but, and it was powerful and it pushed me, it pushed buttons in me that I was really uncomfortable with. But ultimately, I walked away from the film affected and, you know, telling my friends, you've got to go see this movie. And for me, I Spit does the same thing. You know, it's, you're going to be affected by the film or, or you don't have a pulse. Um, but you probably will walk away from it, you know, you'll remember the film and hopefully you'll be telling your friends to go see it. I bet like a good, a good like, barometer gauge for us uh, when the actors got a screening of the film. Um, it was most of the guys. I think Sarah was, was busy doing something else, and we sat there afterward. We, we, we shot this film. We were there. But you only, you know, when you do these things, you only see it from your perspective. You can't see what the camera's seeing and what's what's really happening in the bigger picture. And I think the best barometer for us was after the screening. Lisa, Stephen, and obviously lived with this film for the last however many months, and they came up like, "What you think? What you? I mean, to talk to me." Not one of us said a word. I mean, for the rest of the evening, we went and years later, we still didn't talk about it. We were like, <laughs> you know, I mean, we really, it was, um, and I mean, uh, it's not very many times, sometimes you've worked enough that um, it's not a lot of times that you get a, a reaction on yourself out of something that, you know, you, you, you lived with and you did it for so long. So yeah, I think everybody would definitely go home with uh, remembering this one.